Hey guys, campaign number three of Kingdom Death is about ready to start. Oh, I'm so excited to get back into this. I had wanted to wait for the uh, 1.6 update pack to come out, um, and it's currently being shipped right now. It hasn't shipped in the U.S. yet. It's October uh, um, October 8th right now, um, but but the contents have been spoiled for us, and I've I've looked through it. And I thought for some reason that the, the, the strain mechanics were going to be a part of the 1.6 update pack, but I guess not. So um, looking through the differences, uh, they're, they're fairly minimal. There's just a few small tweaks here and there, and it doesn't, I don't think it would affect the campaign, especially not the beginning of the campaign. So I decided that I didn't want to wait anymore and I wanted to dive back in. So um, our last campaign ended in horrible horrible failure. Um, I think that there is a few a few factors in that. One, um, I tried uh, Spidicules, Spidicules and Drifter Knight expansions. Um, uh, they're always with new expansions. There's, there's a learning curve to how to fight the monster and, um, and unfortunately that, that leads to a lot of TPKs. Um, on top of that, I did Survival of the Fittest, which makes it harder to produce babies, so our population just suffered the entire time. I'd build it up a little bit, I'd get a TPK uh, by fighting a new monster, and it, it was doomed for failure. So uh, hopefully I'll do better this time. Uh, we're playing with two more expansions. Um, I, we're playing with the uh, Spidicules expansion, uh, like last time, and then on the last sale, I was able to actually get uh, Manhunter. So we're gonna play with the Manhunter expansion as well. Uh, this campaign, we're not gonna uh, play with the Drifter Knight. I think two expansions are, are, are kind of maxed out. Like I don't wanna overdo it. I wanna learn how to face these, these guys and be able to kind of figure out how they tick. Um, and I also want to give this campaign a little bit of a chance too. And if I introduce too many uh, expansions, I feel like I'm just gonna, I'm prone to just fail. So I want to at least make it to the Watcher um, again and uh, and and go from there. So uh, with that, uh, I've set up the Prologue White Lion uh, battle. Um, I'm not going to read the introduction uh, if you know uh, if you've watched Kingdom Death playthroughs at all. Uh, you can go back and, and watch one of my previous ones to listen to the introduction. Um, I've, I've uh, named my four starting survivors. I decided to go just really simple with naming conventions so I don't have to print out lists and, and look up stuff. Uh, so we're, we are going with mundane items around the house. So we have uh, Chair, who's a female, and she's the uh, green character. We have uh, a male, Table, who's the red character. We have Paper, a male, who's the blue character. And we have Pen, a female, who's the purple character. Uh, so hopefully they live long enough to see the next fight, um, but uh, anything can happen with Kingdom Death. Uh, so I, I've set it all up. Uh, I've got the uh, hit location deck with Strange Hand on top. So that's all shuffled up. I've got the AI deck, and I believe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's nine wounds to kill the Prologue White Lion. Uh, the movement is six and the toughness is six for the Prologue White Lion. So hopefully we'll be able to just breeze through this. There won't be any deaths, no sudden head explosions or anything like that. But uh, with that, uh, as always, the White Lion goes first. So we do claw, closest threat facing in range. So everybody's the closest threat, um, so we get to pick. We're gonna come right up here and we're going to attack Paper uh, since he's since he's right there up front. So, um, and actually I want to move him right there. Okay, so here we go. So Claw's speed two, hits on a two plus. We don't have any evasion or anything like that, so it's just a straight, straight roll, two plus. Two Lantern Tens. <laughs> this is not a good way to start a campaign. Not a good way to start a campaign with two Lantern Tens against you. Uh, it's only downhill from here. So, all right, two hits. Uh, head and the foot. So I think I'm gonna have Paper spend one survival, his only survival, to dodge the head location, and then we'll take the, take the leg, so that'll go down to a light uh, on that. Perfect, but 
claws done. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, right? No problems at all. Uh, okay, so now we know that Strange Hand's on top, and if you've watched any Kingdom Death strategy guides or playthroughs, everybody always chucks a Founding Stone, automatic hit, automatic crit, we get that plus one strength, and we, we just lose a Founding Stone, which I think is a great, um, a great, uh, uh, a great strategy and I, I'm not going to do anything different. So um, who do we want? Who do you want to take this? Um, um, it doesn't, it really doesn't matter. Who do I like? I like Pen. Uh, so let's have Pen. Uh, Pen is going to chuck her Founding Stone. Uh, so she automatically hits, automatically crits. Uh, she's going to stay right there. So we pull Strange Hand. Uh, critical wound. You hack off the monster's hand. Spend one survival to treasure this moment and gain plus one permanent strength. So she will spend that survival and gain plus one permanent strength. Cool. Um, awesome. So there's that. Oh, we forgot to put a wound in the wound stack from that. Great. Okay. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to get paper out Oh, the front of that white line. So we're going to go one, two. Uh, let's just go right there, two. And then he, Paper's going to attack with the Founding Stone. Uh, speed two, hits on a seven plus because we're not in the blind spot. Uh, one perfect hit, one miss. So perfect hit for a Founding Stone doesn't mean anything, so we just pull a hit location card. The Fleshy Gut. Uh, there's a failure reaction, but let's hope we're not going to fail. So toughness is six. Uh, strength on the Founding Stone is one. So we're gonna hit on a five plus. Five, five will do it. So that's a wound. Um, and then there's no failure reaction on the fleshy gut. So we're good to go. Um, so that is paper's turn. So now let's, let's, have, let's have table come in. We're gonna go into the blind spot with table. And we're gonna attack with the founding stone. Speed two, hits on a six plus now rather than a seven. Uh, two hits, seven and a seven. All right, we got the soft belly and the beast's tail. So the soft belly has no reflex, the beast tail does. So we're gonna do soft belly first. We're gonna hit um, on a six plus, five plus. Three is a miss. Bummer, okay. Now, come on, let's crit on the beast tail. Seven, seven is a hit anyways or a wound, so there's that, uh, but we do do the reflex. Uh, full move the monster forward in a straight line, cancel hits not out of range, any survivors passed over suffer grab. But since nobody's in the front, we just move up to the end and we stop. Okay, so that's uh, table's turn. Uh, now last but not least is chair, and she's in that spot where she can just sidestep real quick like, and uh, she will you know, I wonder, I wonder if we should move her here, because what's going to happen? Um, yeah, because if we move her here, they'll be like closest threat. Uh, if you're in the blind spot, you're not a threat, so we'd have to come over here to attack this guy. So I think we're going to go here, and she's going to attack. Speed two, hits on a seven plus with our Founding Stone. Uh, that's two hits, eight, eight. All right, the beast's brow and the beast's chest. Um, let's see, so the beast's brow has, if we wound, uh, we perform basic action targeting the attacker. The beast's chest, full move, uh, if we fail, we full move the monster forward in a straight line. So it'll slide across the side. So let's do the beast brow. Oh, no, we don't want to do the beast brow because if we wound, it'll turn, attack us, and then we'll attack again and it'll fail and it'll run over us. Um, so let's do the beast chest first. So we're going to hit on a six plus, five plus. Oh my gosh. Lantern 10. So that's a wound right off the bat. And then critical wound, cancel reaction on this card. You strike the white lion's stout heart, gain one random white lion resource. Roll a d10. If the result is a 10, the white lion dies instantly. This would be a great way to end the prologue white lion. Eight. 
close. Do you see that? Boop. Eight. Okay, so we get a random white lion resource. So we get the great cat bone. Okay. We'll put that right over here. And then uh, we got a wound and the beast chest is now done. Okay, beast brow now. Uh, it's a five plus again. Nine, oh my gosh. Uh, this isn't plus one luck, is it? Nope, it's another wound. Uh, and then, so snarling, the monster swats at its attacker. Suffer, attacker suffers one brain damage. So uh, this was chair, so we have a light brain injury at this point and uh, perform basic action targeting the attacker. So it's gonna move here, and it's going to attack. Uh, basic action is speed two, it's on a two plus for one damage, so two plus. Uh, two and a three, too bad we don't have plus one evasion, so that's two hits. Um, let's see where, both to the chest. So we're gonna spend one survival, and we are going to dodge one of the chests, so that gives us a light, a light to the chest. Okay. Okay. Cool. So we have one, two, three, four wounds remaining. That's the way to do it. Um, okay, so everything resets now. Okay, so let's pick an AI card. Enraged is a mood. When this comes into play, draw an AI card. So we'll pull this out. Uh, while Enraged is in play, the White Lightning gains plus one damage token per monster level. Ooh, okay, so that's technically a, a one less wound we have to do though, but we get a plus one damage token. And I forgot to grab my, oh no, here they are. Let's grab the damage tokens. Plus one damage, okay. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna put this right here, so it's kind of a reminder, but all right, now I draw the next AI card. Grasp, closest knockdown survivor in range. Nope, closest survivor in range, so that's gonna be chair. Um, so we're gonna speed one, hits on a two plus. Okay, and there's no way to move out of the way, so speed one hits on a two plus. One, a one, oh my gosh. Uh, so no damage, no after damage, we don't do the grab. Uh, so we only have two AI cards left, so we need to shuffle those up. I'll shuffle them very, very thoroughly. Okay, into the White Lion's turn. So um, it's our turn now. Let's let's try to finish this off. So let's have Pen with her plus one. No, 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 no. Wait. Before let's have Chair move around here. Uh, one, two, three, four. Okay. Yep. Let's have Chair move around. She's going to attack with her Founding Stone. Speed two, seven plus. Uh, so six and a 10, so that's one hit. The beast's back. Uh, failure is full move forward in a straight line, but hopefully we don't have to worry about that. So uh, six plus, five plus. Oh my gosh, literally another lantern 10. Okay, uh, critical wound, white line gains minus one accuracy token. Oh, that is great. That is super great. Accuracy. Oh, yes. Good. Uh, okay, that's a wound. We're down to two wounds. That's Chair's turn, though. Um, now, uh, so we're, we're going to get a little crowded. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to have Paper come in and move all the way over. He's going to attack with his Founding Stone. Speed uh, two. Hits on a six plus. Okay, one hit. That's all we need each time. Oh, Beast back is down. Uh, beast's femur. The blow lands on the monster's leg. Perfect. No reactions or anything. So it's just a five plus. One. So that's not going to do it. Okay. Uh, so that's uh, Paper's turn. Now, let's see. So now let's have, let's have Table come in. Boop and attack, speed two, six plus, uh, two hits, the beast ribs, and the beast maw. So let's do beast ribs first, because the wound is actually a good thing. So we are gonna hit on a 
Uh, six plus, five plus. Oh my gosh. Do you see these rolls tonight? Like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe how many crits I've gotten. Maybe those double crits on the, the first roll of this campaign was a good thing, so. Uh, okay, so wound. Uh, if the attacker has three plus understanding, the sound of cracking ribs is encouraging and the attack gains plus one survival. We do not have that understanding, so we do not understand what's going on. All right, be small to end it. Uh, five plus. Eight. There you go. Easy as that, guys. Kingdom death. This game, <laughs> so easy. Uh, wow, that was that was one of the easiest prologue White Lions uh, fights I have ever had in my entire entire Kingdom Death career. Um, that's awesome. Uh, so we got a great cat bone from that. Um, boy, I'm liking the way this campaign is starting. Uh, so we are going to do Survivors of Victorious. We get out, we draw four white lion resources and four basic resources. Okay. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four. So we get uh, lion claw, white fur, lion claw again, and white fur again. Okay, and then four basic resources. I usually lose at least one person to the prologue white line for some reason, but um, there you have it. Uh, monster hide, monster hide, love juice, oh, beautiful, and monster hide. Okay, great. Uh, so now we start creating our settlement. Um, let's do this. And I can't remember exactly what all I need to do, so let me grab stuff okay so uh, i'm just going to read through it uh, just as a reminder it's been a little while since i've done the very first uh, uh event so we're going to set up um blow the settlement name okay well, so we have to name the settlement uh what are we going to name this settlement guys um let's name it Let's name it, since we're doing mundane household items, let's just call it house. The settlement of house. Our survival limit is one right now. Um, perfect. Notice below the settlement name, the returning survivors gain plus one survival when the settlement is named, okay? So we all gain plus one survival. So pen has one, paper has one. Table has now two, and um, chair has two. I think. Do we start out? So we start out with one. Is our max settle? Is our max survival one right now? I can't remember. Uh, I'll look that up later. Uh, okay, we gain endeavors. So we gain four endeavors for each returning survivor. Out. Okay, we update the timeline. So we are now in lantern year one. So we now trigger returning survivors. So let's look that up real quick. Returning survivors, nominate the survivor. Okay, so nominate a survivor to utter the first words. Um, let's, let's do pen, because she's already got that plus one strength. Um, we are going to do that. So, the nominated survivor steps forward and gains plus one courage. Okay. They lead the other survivors in learning to speak to one another. They discuss their situation, realizing they must hunt to live. Add the white lion to the query list on the settlement record sheet. Your settlement gains the language innovation, so I put that on top. So that means our survival limit is plus one, so our survival limit is now two. So that's, that's what it was. Uh, so it started out at one, we're now at two. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, all survivors gain encourage survival action. So encourage once per round. If standing, spend one survival to call out to a non-deaf survivor. They stand up if knocked down. So then we add the language consequences to the innovation deck. So we'll 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 get that done. Um, actually, I think these are all language. Yeah. Yep. So the, the the build of the very first innovation deck is already spelled out here. So um, that's good. So now we build the innovation deck. The innovation deck represents the potential cultural and technological growth of the settlement. It will grow throughout the campaign as you gain new innovation cards. Find the six innovation cards with language consequences listed under the title. There's six of them. Uh, there's uh, ammonia, drums, uh, hovel, inner lantern, paint, and symposium. So that's our uh, potential of our, of our uh, settlement at this point. Uh, shuffle these cards together. And form your settlement innovation deck. Paste it face down, designate space in the settlement board. Your innovation deck is persistent. Make sure to preserve the unique combination of cards in your deck between play sessions. Finish with the work the settlement gathers around its glowing center. Um, oh, you know what I forgot to do? Uh, I, at the beginning, forgot to do uh, the first day settlement event, which is what I was supposed to do at the very beginning. So let's go ahead and do that now. The survivors wander, drawn to a blooming light in the distance. They find the serene comfort of a towering pile of lanterns and a small collection of scared people. On a deep, instinctual level, they know this area is safe, and they make it their home. Roll 1d10 to determine your starting population and record the results on the back of the settlement record sheet. Choose and record genders for unnamed survivors. You may name an unnamed survivor and create their survivor record sheet at any time during the settlement phase. All right. We, anytime we need to roll a d10 and get a 10, this is it. <laughs> Two, six unnamed survivors plus returning survivors. So our population is 10. Not what I was looking for, but that's okay. Okay, population 10. All right, return to the settlement section of the first story and proceed to returning survivors. The first day settlement event card will not be used again during the campaign. Do not include it in your settlement event deck. Okay, so it gets moved off to the side until the next campaign. Okay, so now, uh, now we're going to build the innovation deck, which is did uh, glowing center. So, armed with language, the nominated survivors aptly names the glowing center of their home the Lantern Horde. The settlement gains the Lantern Horn Horde settlement location. Board, settlement location and place it face up on your play area the lantern horde is the source of all innovations and further locations the settlement will develop the nominated survivor sits in front of the lantern horde in awe and gains plus one understanding okay so pen gains plus one courage plus one understanding they must skip the next hunt phase as they ponder the meaning of existence so pen cannot go out Check off the skip hunt box on the survivor's board sheet. They cannot be selected as a departing survivor this phase. Return to the first story to complete the settlement phase. Okay, so back to first story. Okay, so we've triggered uh, story event returning survivors. We update the death count. We don't have any this time. Uh, check milestones. Uh, we haven't had baby, we haven't made babies. We haven't died, so there's no death principle. Uh, so now we can develop. So um, we have four endeavors. Uh, the Lantern Horde is pretty straightforward. Uh, we want to build the Bonesmith, the Skinnery, and the Organ Grinder. So let's go ahead and do that. So that's going to be three of our innovations. So Organ Grinder, Bonesmith, and the Skinnery. Okay, then we have one innovation left. I wonder if we can innovate. Um, I wonder if we should innovate here. That's the, so we only have one organ and that's the love juice. I'm thinking we should probably use that to make a baby. So we have tons of hide and bone. Oh, this is almost the perfect makeup. So, okay. So let's not, we're not gonna innovate at this point. 
and I think I said their innovations, their endeavors, not innovations. So sorry about that. Uh, okay, so let's let's do this. Let's first off, um, let's trigger intimacy by using the love juice. All right, let's do it. Intimacy. Nominate one consenting male and one consenting female survivor and roll on the intimacy table below. So let's do, let's do paper. Oh, I should have done paper and pen. That would have been perfect. But uh, pen is plus one strength and, and she's skipping the next hunt. She's got that courage and understanding. I don't want to use her off that. So let's do, let's do chair and table. They're, they're a fitting couple, I think. Um, so let's have, they are nominated for intimacy. They are consenting adults. So let's uh, roll a d10 on the table below. Oh no. Oh no. Do you guys see that? Uh, that's a one. The couples cannot bear the weight of the world. They clasp hands and march into the deep and endless darkness. The nominated survivors are dead. <laughs> oh, I should have known better when I had such a great prologue white lion showdown. Oh, oh no. So table and chair, dead. From intimacy, so I guess we can do uh, principal death now. Um, yikes, boy, um, that's not good. Uh, so let's hold on. Let's uh, let's write down um, table. So we update the death count real quick to two. Uh, now we trigger principal death. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe that. That is not a good way to start. Okay, the group must decide what to do with their first survivor corpse. Uh, so we can do the first harvest or the first grave. Um, so let's see, let's look at the innovation deck here. And I just wanna review um, what both of them are. Uh, cannibalize and uh, graves. Since we've played this a number of times, I feel like this isn't cheating by looking it up. So let's see. Uh, graves. All new survivors gain plus one understanding. When a survivor dies during the hunt or the showdown phase, gain two uh, endeavors. When a survivor dies during the settlement phase, gain one endeavor. Or cannibalize. Um, cannibalize, you gain plus one survival limit. Whenever a survivor dies, draw one basic resource. You know, I, I still think um, cannibalize is the best option here, uh, mainly because uh, in my previous campaigns, I haven't used um, endeavors as much. So like, like I'll have like one left over and I'm like, well, I guess I'll just do augury or something and just kind of blow through them. Uh, maybe I need to look into how better to utilize those, but I think we're gonna pick cannibalize. I think that's gonna be our, our way to go here. Um, so we've picked cannibalize. So we now do the first harvest. The settlement decides to harvest the body for resources. The settlement gains death principle cannibalize. And death principle cannibalize. There we go. Find a place on the settlement record board and note it on the settlement record sheet. After adding the card to the settlement, add one, roll 1d10. Three, not good. Settlement ritualistically divides the corpse with a sharp stone and grimly consumes the dead flesh. Gain one founding stone uh, starting gear. Okay, so we gain that founding stone that we used. Gain that back. Um, and then all departing survivors plus three insanity. Uh, so I'm gonna write that on the top one time. Plus three insanity. So we'll remember that for our next, our next departure. Okay, bummer. Yeah, I would love to do plus one permanent speed. That would have been epic, but all for naught. So, okay, so we, our population 
is now eight instead of 10, uh, which is not great. Um, so now, uh, so now let's use the rest of our resources. So I think, um, I think what we want to do, we, we need to get some, uh, we need to get some weapons and some armor as quickly as possible. So, uh, I really like the bone ax, but it needs an organ. So I don't think we have another organ after using that love juice we have. We have three bone. And one, two, three, four, five, hide. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, I think that, that that's a brainless uh, decision on, on the hide. We have five hide. The rawhide armor set, there are five of them. So what we're gonna do right off the bat is we are gonna get a full rawhide armor set, which is awesome. So we get pants, boots, vest, headband, and gloves. Awesome. That is that is really really solid star. So that's that's all used up, um, and then uh, let's do um, let's use one bone for bone darts. And I, and the reason why I'm doing bone darts uh, over something else is because uh, the white lion has the this card this this mood card that. He flops over on his side, and then if you hit him, if you wound him, then he jumps up and attacks everybody around him. So it helps to have that little bit, that one ranged weapon that can kind of plink at him from a distance. He doesn't attack anybody. And it's good to just have it just in case. So that's a good, solid starting item, I feel, that's really cheap. Um, okay, and then... Um, so it's either going to be the bone dagger or the bone blade. Let's look at both of those real quick. I really wanted the bone axe, bone dagger, bone blade. Okay, so the bone dagger is speed three. It's on a seven plus for one strength. With the bone blade, uh, speed two, it's on a six plus with two strength. Um, the bone dagger is not frail. Hmm. Let's just do one of each. I think that we'll just try it. Um, I think I've mainly gone with gone with the bone blade, just because of that two strength. Um, but the bone dagger is good because we've got that that uh, it's not frail. And on a perfect hit, which which we haven't we've been doing that doesn't mean anything. We gain plus one survival. So. So yeah, so let's do that. That uses the last of our resources. We have completely burned through all of our beginning resources, which is, in my opinion, is perfect. We have four founding stones. We've got a bone dagger, a bone blade. We've got a full rawhide armor set and bone darts. So uh, I couldn't ask for a better start. Oh, uh, we have one endeavor left. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think that that's all we can do. Oh, we can augury. So let's let's augury. Uh, so we just roll a d10. Six. Uh, gain plus one survival. Uh, so I, f I forgot to um, nominate a person to do that. So let's just give let's give uh, let's give paper plus one survival. So paper gets plus one survival. So now they have two. Whew. Okay, well, there you have it. Um, the very first uh, prologue white lion is defeated. Um, the first settlement, the first year of the house settlement is completed. And we go out to fight a full-fledged level one white lion next. Uh, so uh, we're, we're diving in, guys. I'm, I'm so excited to get started. Um, like, it's always like this this uh surreal feeling when when you're diving into one of these big campaigns that i mean if i play once a week or once every other week it, it could take like you know 24 weeks 24 plays basically um you know that's almost a year worth of playing if i play every other week uh half a year if i play every week almost so uh awesome i can't i can't wait um thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate all the feedback from the last campaign uh, again if there's anything that i can do differently to help uh 
uh, enhance your guys' experience for watching, um, then feel free to comment. If I'm uh, forgetting any rules or do something wrong, point it out. I'll try to fix it in, in a later episode. So thank you guys again so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.